Hey guys, it is Janice with JK Reviews. I'm so sorry how horribly late this this review is. Um, I know that it's been a while since I did my last one, uh, The Last House on the Left. Uh, today I will be doing I Spit on Your Grave, the old versus new of that one. Um, first off, I want to I want to start by saying uh, I almost didn't do the review tonight because I am terribly sick. <laughs> Again, uh, I have a really sore throat, but it was, it was supposed to, I was supposed to do the review last night, and then my throat was really bad, and today I managed to go out with my mom and go shopping, so I'm like, you know what, I just really want to get this review out, um, but I will say that, uh, I was originally doing Last House on the Left, and, and because it was my favorite one, and thinking, you know, the other ones are really good, so, you know, there's a few I don't like, and we'll get into those later, but there's a few that I do like, and so it's not like I'm not saving the best for last, and I won't regret, you know, doing Last House on the Left first. And then I rewatched some of these, and now I really do wish I did Last House on the Left <laughs> last. <laughs> Because it could have been my reward for rewatching some of these films. And one of them was actually the remake of I Spit on Your Grave. Um, the first time I watched it, I just kind of didn't think too much of it. I, I really preferred the original, just like I still do. But it wasn't that big of a deal. They're both, they're both kind of the same thing to me. This time around, um, which would be the fifth time I've seen the remake of I Spit on Your Grave, I don't know what was going on with me, but I did not enjoy myself. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I honestly don't feel like I Spit on Your Grave needed a remake. Um, and like some remakes that I that I do enjoy, um, it didn't really bring anything different. It, it didn't really offer any any difference to the story or anything like that. It was it was kind of just the same thing. So it didn't it didn't feel like it needed it needed a remake. It was gorier, it was a little more graphic, but for the 1970s, uh, I Spit on Your Grave, the original, was just as graphic. So, uh, we'll get into it, but unfortunately, um, I could not find the original, no matter how much I tried. I had watched it one time, um, a while ago, and the remake is much easier to find. You can find copies of it anywhere. We had it at my store, so you can rent it without any problem. The original, not so much. It's a lot harder to find, which is a bummer because I was trying to rewatch it again because my memory has slept quite a bit about some of the events, which is ironic given that's my my favorite one <laughs> between the two. Um, so it's not going to be as descriptive as Last House on the Left. So I apologize that this one is is kind of sloppy. I also apologize for my hair. My hair looks terrible. Wow, I'm gonna put this up. <laughs> um, and I apologize for my raspy throat, but I would like to just go ahead and start this um, review and not look like a cannibal. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm very unprofessional tonight. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the review, and I'm going to try very hard to go by memory of what I remember between the two. And um, this time it's going to be pretty easy to be non biased because both are just kind of... I didn't necessarily like either. I mean, they were both good movies and everything, but unlike the previous review that I did, I didn't fall in love with either of these movies. These movies kind of have, uh, for me, a kind of a non-relatable situation. I mean, not not in that like the abuse that this girl endured or anything is is unrelatable, but um, I I always find myself a little more attached to the stories where the revenge is carried out by a loved one more than the person themselves. I know that's kind of stupid, but I just kind of find myself more immersed, especially um, with Last House, with it being, you know, parents who, in the in the remake, wanting to protect their, their alive daughter, and uh, in the original, wanting to avenge their, their dead daughter. Nothing really changes much with I Spit. It all kind of happens in the same way. Um, this, this writer named Jennifer, she in both cases, comes to this quiet country. Wow, I'm so unprofessional today. I just knocked my camera over. <laughs> uh, she comes to uh, this remote cabin in the woods to write her book. She's from New York City. Um, a bunch of guys who are just the most horrible, deplorable people in the entire universe attack her. Um, in in the um, 
different ways. Uh, that's kind of what changes with original versus new. There, there's different ways that they attack her. Um, they leave her for dead, uh, try to kill her. She, she survives, and then she gets her revenge. So it's all kind of played out in the same way. No one survived that died in the original. No one changes. Ending's pretty much the same way. So, um, without further ado, we will, we will get into, though, like, the, the concept of the, of the films. Um, I think another thing that kind of worked for me was 19, 1978 is when the, the, the second one came out. And it was during the 1970s when the rape re revenge genre was very, very popular and becoming a huge thing. Um, Last House kind of introducing exploitation, maybe not introducing, but definitely bringing it into the foreground. There were a bunch of very controversial, banned up and kept quiet kind of porno kind of exploitations, which were like sex exploitations or um, certain certain movies that I also also watched um, that were never really in theaters. They were just kind of like you know talked about. But Last House on the Left kind of introduced the the idea of the exploitation films. Uh, this film took the gore and the violence of Last House and bumped it up. Uh, in 1978. It is gorier, it is uh, more graphic, and it's not funny at all. Which works. It's a good thing. It doesn't need to be funny. Um, and the, the remake also. Uh, in the original, um, I kind of, I kind of feel like we get to know Jennifer more. Jennifer is given more to do in the original. Um, and especially after, after her attack, uh, the men, uh, in, in the original, um, well, uh, they, she's out, she's out, like, rowing a boat in nature, just kind of enjoying herself, and the men attack her, and they bring her up to, um, the woods, and they attack, and they, and they take turns raping her, and then, um, she gets away from them, and then they find her again in the woods, and they sodomize the poor thing, and then she gets away from them, and she gets to the house, and she washes her hair, and she puts on some clothes, and she's all bloody and beaten, and she's just about to call the police, and then they, uh, they come in again, and they, again, they beat her up, they rape her, and then they, um, these are terrible people, <laughs> and, uh, they, they leave her there, and then one of them, who kind of, kind of had maybe a tiny ounce of conscience, which extremely, extremely irredeemable, despite that, um, was told that he needed to kill her, and his name was Matthew, and he at first kind of befriended her, um, she gave him an apple for helping her, you know, carrying her groceries, or delivering her groceries, and then, and then, you know, he kind of was, like, the excuse that they had is that he needs to, he needs to lose his virginity to this woman, and, um, at first he, he did not have anything, to, he just watched, and he was kind of scared, and he just kind of watched while getting turned on. <laughs> People are awful. Um, and then eventually he, he helped, uh, he helped rape her, um, but he was supposed to kill her in the original. He couldn't do it. He instead just put some blood on the knife and then left her there. And then we get to watch Jennifer recuperate from what happened to her. She's healing. She is terrified. She's holding a gun. She's lying in bed just thinking about the awful things that were done to her. And then we slowly watch that go from a fearful woman to a very pissed off, vengeful woman. And you do not blame her one bit. <laughs> um, in the remake, uh, things are reversed. Uh, it, it starts in the house and then goes into the woods. So she's in her home. The same thing happens with Matthew. He delivers her groceries and she gives him a thank you and, and a very friendly conversation. She had already kind of emasculated one of the guys, or, or really, like, all she did was giggle at something he did dumb, because he's dumb. They're all dumb. These, these characters don't have any development. You don't have any, any type of quality that really makes them human. And, and, yes, there's people out there that exist like that. There's just deplorable human beings out there, but, um, this kind of feels like the these these two movies kind of feel like they they have no purpose except to exploit. And I've heard that said about a lot of films before that are like, oh, this is only this is only to glorify 
this and glorify that, and then I would disagree because I would feel like there's more to it, but these films kind of feel like that's what it is. <laughs> Let's just totally amp up how horrible the original rape was in the original. Let's make the new one do the same thing, only amp it up. Although you can't amp up a lot of it because the original, she actually endured a lot worse than the new one. And I hate to say that because how can you endure worse than what either Jennifer's endure? But she did. She she was left very, very bloody and, and, and beaten and everything. And then the, the Jennifer in the in the new one, is attacked in the home and tormented, and then, like, in the original, they're making fun of her being a writer and reading her stuff and ripping it up, and then she runs after getting, you know, tormented, and they just kind of follow her back to the house, and she calls the sheriff, and the sheriff comes, and he's in on it, which I was like, really? We're gonna, we're gonna make that, we're gonna do that, really. We're gonna do that. Oh, cringe. I'm sorry, but I just kind of, like, that wasn't necessary. Like, in the original, at least she had some people in itself that no one really was a part of it. I mean, the main, the characters were Jennifer and the men, but there were some townspeople who were worried about her, like a pastor. Um, there were police officers who, like, would have come had she been able to call the police. Making the sheriff in on it was, like... Okay. What a twist! You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. The, these two movies is kind of... They got less interesting of the um, the sympathy of, like, you know, oh, this poor girl and this revenge is so understanding, but then it started to get a little ridiculous to me, which I feel kind of bad about. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, but what ends up happening is uh, because the sheriff is in on it, he he kind of leads the charge. It used to be Johnny, the main dude at first, who was leading the charge in the original and in, in the remake, but then in the remake, the sheriff kind of becomes the one leading the charge. I don't even know. I know that, like, both these films are kind of, like, there's, there's movies out there where you, where you were, you're told they're, like, they're a feminist film, and you might disagree. Like, I, I disagree that Wonder Woman is a feminist film. I feel like Wonder Woman can be for everyone. It wasn't about the fact that she was a woman. It's that she's just strong and cool and an amazing character. There's a few films that some of you say, like, you know, this is this is an anti-man movie. And, again, I would maybe disagree. Um, pretty darn sure. I Spit on Your Grave is the one movie where I would definitely say this is indeed a feminist film. Which for me, in, in 1978, it made sense because it was during the time that women were starting to become a lot more dominant. A lot more, like, you can't treat me this way. You can't, you can't force me to do things. I am rising up. I am getting stronger and burning their bras. And it was a time that, like, my, my parents were, were, you know, aware. And, and they saw what was going on and everything because they were growing up at that time. So they, they totally understood what was going on in the world to explain why, why something like this movie would come out. It was coming out at the time where a lot of these films were being made about a woman, you know, having power. And this was the type of film that definitely, you know, it addressed abuse, it addressed rape. 2010, I was like, yeah, yeah, abuse is still going on, rape is still going on. It's happening, men, women, children, everyone is enduring abuse every day, but it kind of felt like in 1978, there was a message that needed to be addressed, like, oh, this is happening, this needs to be dealt with. 2010 is like, this is, this is clearly just a chance to remake a horror movie and just make it as disgusting as possible, and it, and it came out, I mean, it was coming out during a time where a lot of remakes were happening, and while the remake is loved by a lot more people than the original, um, it also sparked sequels. I don't know, I don't know. I will be reviewing the sequels later, later, when my mind can handle it. I could barely handle the, the first one, so just imagine me with the, with the other two. Um, but, uh, with the original, again, I feel like Jennifer, we're getting to know her. In the, in the new one, after the abuse is carried out on her, and, and it's all in the woods, and this, this one douche is videotaping it, um, she 
doesn't, she isn't left for dead. She actually just kind of walks over to the bridge and just goes over the into the water. And then they all try to search for her and they can't find her. And so you're kind of, like, you're made to believe that she's missing. But you know somehow she's alive and you see all the guys. You don't get to see her recuperate. You don't get to see how she's doing. And I really wanted to see that. I wanted to get to know this Jennifer. And honestly, ironically, the acting is better in the remake. And yet I care way more about Jennifer in the original because you're seeing the transformation of this innocent, doe-eyed city girl who just wanted to get away to the beautiful country and just kind of explore, you know, what it was like in the country to write her book and then become an angry, vengeful, justice-seeking killer. Whereas in the new one, I don't know, she, she didn't change much to me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, the, not a lot changes in the, in the remake. The lighting is really dark all through. Uh, in the original, you have this beautiful scenery, you have this, this, um, this, uh, way of deceiving you into thinking, oh, so pretty, so serene, and she's in this safe cabin, and in this really cute cabin, and then it becomes terror, and you feel it, you feel the terror, where, like, nowhere she goes is safe, the woods are no longer beautiful and quaint, they are terrifying, the house is no longer safe and secure, it is now open, and they could come any minute, and I was like, Oh my gosh, poor Jennifer. The only thing you can do is fight back. Get him, girl, get him. Whereas in the new one, I'm like, okay, well, sort of. But it was always scary to begin with. I didn't feel safe in that cabin from the moment she went there. I didn't feel safe in those woods. Everything was really creepy looking. The sky and everything. I was like, somebody needs to needs to find out what's going on with that sky. Because, like, she was there for two weeks and it just never, the sun never came out. In my, at least it didn't seem like it. Um... So that was, I just felt like the the original tried harder. I don't know. I still kind of feel like it didn't need a remake because, again, nothing changes from there on. We get we get the, the vengeance. And, and here's the part where I feel really bad because in the original, I don't remember exactly the exact way that everybody dies. I do know how Matthew dies. He dies in the same way that um, he died in the new one. And then in, the, in both ways, uh, Matthew feels bad, he should, I don't care if you feel bad, <laughs> don't do it, um, he feels bad, and he thinks he's seeing her ghost, and, uh, she appears, and she's not a ghost, but he thinks she's a ghost, and then she's able to lure him, and hang him, um, although in the, in the, in the remake, uh, he's, at, he, he's dragged away, and you think he's killed off, but then he's still alive for later, and how he was kept, I don't even know. I don't, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first time. I don't know what I, I don't know. Um, uh, and then she moves on in the original. She moves on to, like, killing um, some other people. She's killing the others. I know she kills Johnny by castrating him. Like, she... She seduces him to have a bath and have a hand job in the bath. Like, you know, oh, you know, I actually enjoyed it, what you did to me. And he falls for it. <laughs> He's an idiot. And um, they're in the bath and she grabs a knife and she's and like, good. Lets him bleed out. So, yay. <laughs> um, from there, she... Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't remember exactly how she kills everyone else. Um, pretty sure there's a boat scene where she chases a guy with a boat and she chops him up with the... Because... Because of how... I mean, she was trying to get revenge in the same way that she, like, the way they hurt her. In the new one, they kind of did it a little differently. But in the, in the new one, it was like the way they hurt her. Or the old one, it was the way they hurt her. In the new one, it was... All the many ways that you can kill someone. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think someone gets chopped up in a, in a, in a rotor, 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 boat rotor, probably saying that wrong. I'm so sick, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, those of you who love Ice Bed on Your Grave, who were, like, super excited about the Saru, are like, this is very disappointing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I really needed to get it out there, so, 
yeah. Um, so, uh, in the, in the remake, things are a little different, uh, with the killings, the way they're killed, and I guess that, that has some significance because, again, in, in the original one, um, it's kind of just done and done, and then she goes after them and it's done. Uh, there's no one-on-one -on -one with anybody. No one hurt her on a personal, well, they all hurt her on a personal level, but there's no personal confrontation with any of them about how they treated her. And that is something that the remake does address in, in you know, in, in which I, I did actually think was a good idea. Um, there's this one moment where uh, the it is revealed that the sheriff had told uh, the guy who was videotaping to destroy the tape, and he did not, and Jennifer got a hold of it. And then he finds out because she mails it to him. Pretty sure she made duplicates. And he, you know, he gets really angry, and... Um, they're supposed to go and finish the job, but, uh, one of them is left against a tree to have fish. Uh, he, his eyes are kept open. Oh, gosh. His eyes are kept open by fish hooks. <laughs> he deserves it. He does, but ow. Uh, and she, like, rubs fish eggs in his, in his face. I don't know how that relates to how she what was done to her, but, you know, it's torment, uh, and then the, the birds peck his eyes out, I hate eye violence, <laughs> I've told you guys that before, that was hard to watch, but at the same time, because of what they did to her, I watched it, because I was kind of like, I want to see what's done to these guys, because I feel they, you know, they deserve it, one of them is, uh, th like, his head is dunked in line, which burns, because during her rape, like, they dunked her head in the water, which made me very, very angry. I was like, ooh, what, what douchebags. Um, and then, surprisingly enough, and I don't know what my deal is, I, I dropped my camera. I don't know what my deal is, but for some reason I forgot how Johnny died. Pretty sure he got castrated again. Pretty sure that's what happened to him. I don't know why I forgot how he died. He's one of the most important characters. Okay, I think that... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got castrated. Yeah. It's really bloody. <laughs> but the one that I remember the most is uh, is the sheriff. And with that, they, they built up kind of an antagonist between... Jennifer and the sheriff. In the original, it was more of a, a like, Johnny leading the charge, and so the, conf well, the confrontation between Johnny and, and, and Jennifer never really happened. No one had a confrontation, where it was like a, a, like a, you, you're the one I can't wait to kill type of thing, and then, then in the remake, it's, uh, it's the sheriff, who has a daughter and a wife, and he's a loving father and a loving husband. Oh my gosh. And, um, he hears from his wife that, like, his daughter's teacher has come over to, you know, to talk with them, and she's taking her daughter out for ice cream to celebrate because she did well in school, and so she hands the phone, and it's Jennifer! Jennifer is somehow pretending to be a teacher, and taking the daughter, and so the sheriff goes to the house, and he gets there. And he thinks that his daughter's been kidnapped, and she has, she traps him, just like she trapped the others, and she has him bent over with his pants down, and she takes a gun, and she right, right up, right up his asshole, right up his ass, um, right up his butthole, uh, like, it mainly, mainly because, well, he, it made more sense in the original, but yeah, I mean, it, it was a lot to do with just, you know, the force, the anal violence that was, that was done on her, which was also done in the original, and, um, and so, you know, there, there's this moment, though, where she does say to him, you know, he's like, she's my daughter, please let her go, and she's like, you know, I'm a daughter, you know, you, can you imagine, like, what my father would, would, you know, do, or, can you imagine what it's like to, to have to tell my father what, what was done to me and everything? And, um, or did you think for one minute that I'm a daughter as well? 
And I thought that was really interesting. You know, it's, it's actually really, in any way, in any case, the sheriff had more of complexity than any of them. The rest of them were just single douche bags who didn't really have anything uh, to hide. They, nobody liked them in the town. But the sheriff was known, and everybody thought that he was a good man. So there was a little more complexity to that, and that he could be, like, this really kind father and this really sweet husband and yet doing something this terrible to an innocent woman so it's just sad what people are capable of and weird you know and, and I've seen that before in in any case like you know you hear about the serial killers and then you read about them and, and they're they're divorced and like the the wife's not done they just divorced them and it's like well okay interesting <laughs> they're off limits or something it, it's it is very, uh, very terrifying what, what people are, like, you just don't know what they are behind closed doors or behind their eyes, like, what they are capable of or who they really are, you know, it's, it's very sad, uh, so I guess that's why they thought that we needed a character like him, I just don't think it needed to be the sheriff, I wish that they had kept that alone, like, couldn't they have just made Johnny a married man with kids and then like you know make him lead the charge and everything and I know they were trying to make it that like it was the lead off of a twist in that he like comes to the house and it's like she thinks she's safe and then it turns out you know he's in on it so I get, I get they were doing that but I just kind of wish that they had kind of left it out of it being like in a, a I don't know I just thought it was a dumb twist. I'm sorry. I think it would have been a, a better idea to make Johnny, like, someone who has a, um, a, a wife and kids and actually, like, loves them and cares about them and they would never hurt them. And then, like, you know, would would hurt this innocent woman, you know. Uh, but, when it, you know, it turns out uh, Jennifer did not kidnap the daughter. Um, she's at home. She's fine. And, uh, the person behind the burlap sack and when she thought was his daughter is actually Matthew. And the minute he opens his eyes, the gun's gonna go off. Killing them both. And the movie pretty much ends with Jennifer just, like, walking out of the house. You hear the gun go off. You see the bodies. And she walked away. The movie's over. Ah! It's like what? <laughs> I didn't get, like, any, I didn't care about any character in that movie. I mean, I cared a little bit about Jennifer, but I really didn't know who she was. I am, like, literally confused. What did I just watch? Uh, I guess the original did the same thing, but again, I felt like I knew Jennifer, so it kind of didn't bother me that much. And, and it was also it was 1978, so I was kind of like, all right, a lot of endings, a lot of movies did that in the 1970s and the 1980s, where they just kind of ended. But 2010, step up! You know, at least we got, in Last House on the Left, we got this really, like, not a lot of people liked the ending, but it was a satisfying one to me. We got to watch the final, you know, we got to watch Mary and the family get to the hospital. They got to be safe, and then he came back and killed him in the micro <laughs> with the microwave. <laughs> we knew the character, so we were, like, ready to cheer. We were ready to hate Krug and cheer on John. And this, like, I, what? What's going on? Okay, first of all, like, okay, did she make duplicates of the tape? Because they didn't establish that. If you're sending the tape to the cop, please, please have a duplicate so you can show it to the cops why you did this. Because they're going to find out, you know. They found out in the original. They just, you know, it, they real, you know, they, they knew what they had done. So it was like, we're not going to, we're not going to convict you, which I, I assume, I guess they brought it up in the third one, but. I assume that's what she did, is she made duplicates, but they didn't go into that. Um, and another thing is, like, what, what was going on with Jennifer? Like, in the original, we got to watch her in the house, and she was recovering. Well, we know that she went back to the house. We don't have to build up any suspense. It's a remake. We know she's alive. But she jumps in the water, and she just swam away. I mean, like, we're... Where did she get her clothes? And like, did she wait underwater until they, they left? I mean, that's like seven guys looking for her, like fishing through the water. How did she get away? I want to know. <laughs> I want to get to know this girl. I want to watch her survival. I don't want to just watch her get brutalized and then watch her kill. I want to get to know her. And if you think that the remakes help us get to know her and that the sequels help us get to know her, you are 
sorely mistaken because the sequel has nothing to do with Jennifer. It's a totally different person. Totally different case, actually. So, why remake it? Is is just kind of where I where I come from on the matter. Is I didn't feel like it needed a remake. And and as far as the remakes versus the original, the original made more sense to me. And I it's sad because originally I did like the remake, and a lot of people do. In fact, a lot of people don't know it's a remake. So it was it was just very strange to me how unnecessary this remake was when you get a taste of the the original. Because there's some movies that like I think that it, on a whole, yeah, they do need a they do need a remake. Like there's so much more potential to them, which is what I felt about um, the next movie. I will be reviewing. I do feel like this movie needed to be remade. It did add some differences. I didn't love it as much as Last House on the Left or the one that I'll be doing last. And I, you know, but, and then as far as The Spending on Your Grave, I didn't necessarily hate these movies. Like, I hate one of the remakes coming up. I, I hate that movie and I hate that I have to remake, rewatch it because I don't remember anything that happens because I'm so infuriated by that one. But I chose to do this, so I need to rewatch it. Uh, <laughs> but I don't hate these films. I just didn't feel like it was necessary to remake this one. If you like the remake, that is awesome, and I would love to hear what you guys thought of it. And also, please correct me on anything, because I know my memory's just shot. I'm drugged up, and I'm just really just um, doing this one with uh, little little knowledge, little little memory. Um, if I could have, I, it's sad because I just rewatched the remake so that I'd have a good memory. And then as I'm doing this, I'm blanking out. And so I think the next time that I do the old versus new, I'm going to do notes <laughs> so that I'm paying more attention. Um, but, uh, I will, I will be, uh, I will, I will be more uh more assertive with the next one because I can get access to both versions very easily and uh it's one that I hadn't announced but then was reminded that it was a very good old versus new that I feel I should definitely do because both were good but the remake definitely needed to be made whereas I actually didn't like the original I used to make fun of the original and the remake for me was was amazing and that is the Stephen King's it I feel like that needs to be on the old versus new. Um, I'm also, I'm out, I might do Evil Dead. I don't want to do Evil Dead. I hate the Evil Dead remake, like, so much. Not as much as the Mother's Day remake, but I definitely wasn't a fan of the, of the Evil Day remake. I might do that one. I might save that for some other time, maybe for Halloween or something. Um, but my, my next review is going to be Stephen King's It. Um, I will have much better memory of the two of them. So, um, as far as, as far as I spit on your grave, um, I mean, I would definitely check out the original because I feel like the original was delivering a message that needed to be delivered. And also, despite the acting being not that good because it was the 1970s, um, I still feel like it was more developed and a little more well written. Uh, the remake is definitely a film that if you just want to sit down and enjoy a horror movie because it is a flat out horror movie, then that's your that's your film. Both are very brutal, both are very um, exploitive, and both are just you know they're just very very feminist, um, powerful woman 